Hello everyone, I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer and welcome back to another video on Oblivion and uh, today I want to talk about something uh, that I don't think Oblivion really has and that is moral choices. Uh, moral choices is a thing you can make in Game Dev Tycoon, you can add it to RPG games and I kind of thought about it and you know Oblivion for all its RPG elements with its character building, character creation and all the quests you do, there really isn't a lot of moral choices you can have. Of course, there's the system of, you know, you can be a criminal and, like, murder people. Uh, but that doesn't feel like a moral choice. That feels more like, I want to make a criminal. And then, as a criminal, you're not faced with tough choices like backstabbing your uh, partner or something like that, right? Like, take the Thieves Guild, for example. The Thieves Guild, you aren't, like, asked by a higher member to, like, steal from a fellow thief, right? You know that's against the code of ethics, but, you know, it's a higher rank telling you what to do. Something like that. Or there isn't, like, a kill this guy or kill this guy type, you know, the classic moral choice of do you kill your friend or do you kill your other friend, you know? Or like one guy goes in the lava pit or the other. You don't really have that experience in Oblivion. I, I mean, I don't really see that in Skyrim either. You know, the only thing I really see in Oblivion is... There's like an Argonian that they're going to sacrifice. That you can free from like the cultists. That's about it. Uh, sometimes you can save them, sometimes you can't. In Skyrim there's prisoners, Argonians and stuff like that you can save. But I really don't see any moral choices. But I think Oblivion doesn't need moral choices. I really think that, as a game, it has that linear story, and it goes the route, instead of going the route of the player is in control of the story, they went went the route of, like, you're reading a storybook, and if you go play the Fighters Guild again, you're revisiting the Fighters Guild storybook, or you're revisiting the Thieves Guild storybook, or you're revisiting this cave storybook, you know? And I think that style, I like that style of Oblivion. I like those linear quests where, you know, I feel like moral choices, you know, kind of in 2019, I think they have turned into a stereotype. I think I'm going to say it. Because I've seen games like... Not necessarily the butterfly effect, because I think the butterfly effect is really hard to stereotype, unless you, I mean, if you do it cheaply where it's very obvious, right? But I think moral choices is very difficult to convey, and it's kind of becoming a, a trope. You know, you had Until Dawn, and you had The Walking Dead. I kind of feel like it lived and died with The Walking Dead, right? Like, I, like, I feel like after like Call of Duty Black Ops 2's campaign that was pretty good and The Walking Dead like a game where you have moral choice I feel like just hasn't resonated with me watching it like I don't remember any game with good moral choices other than The Walking Dead uh Until Dawn and like there's a couple scenes in Men of Medan where like you have moral choices Resident Evil was really good that it didn't have moral choice. Because um, I feel like when it comes to a video game, if you go with a moral choice and it doesn't land right, like let's say you go for a moral choice and you don't care, I, I feel like it seems kind of egotistical of a game to do that. You know, that's how I feel about it. And so I'm really glad that Oblivion <laughs> didn't do it. I like the storybook style. I like, you know... You're going to build your character. All right, let's go do this quest. Right? Because, I mean, eventually, the moral choices are going to be, let's do this quest and get result B. Let's do this quest and get result C. You know, instead of, let's do this quest to get the result. It's just result A, B, and C. Right? So, that's kind of how I feel. I, That's how I feel about it. Uh, the infamy and fame symbol or system is there. I almost think it, the game, like, it would change 
the game a lot if they fleshed it out, right? Because you, then you get an infamy, like, throughout the land or throughout each city, but I feel like if you get into those specifics, Oblivion would almost change as a game, right? Because then, like, in Oblivion, if you do something good, you don't, like, for instance, here's a good one. The Count of Leowin, right? To do the quest where you join the White Stallions, you don't have to get nine fame in Leowin, right? You can just go close nine Oblivion Gates or do some good quests and, you know, I feel, I feel like the game is large enough and, like, the size, not large enough, small enough and the size and scope of the game is such that I'm glad they didn't flesh out the, the fame and infamy system like they did in Skyrim or the crime system. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm glad the crime system in Skyrim is the fame and infamy system in Oblivion. And I'm glad that Oblivion doesn't have moral choices. I don't know how many times I've said that, but the storybook style, the linear story, fits very well. And I appreciate it in Oblivion. I think it does really well. Let me know what you think about it, though, in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you think about the stories in Oblivion. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Have you found any mods that present moral choices in Oblivion that are actually pretty awesome? Let me know. I'd love to hear what you guys think about it. But yeah, I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer. I suck just as bad as you do at video games. And I'll see you guys in the next Oblivion video.